Well, that's been okay. Well, you, you can't fall behind by Dayton to the extent we did in the first half and second half and, and uh, win very often. I thought the kids that, that brought us back and gave us a, a chance gave tremendous efforts. Uh, and, and, and Jarrell and Ruben had very uh, subpar performances for them. But you know what? I like their efforts. You know, I, they, they didn't quit. And... Uh, you know, I, I want to win as much or more than anyone, but I, I, I like the fight uh, in our guys today. Talk about the, the fight when you got you have guys who, you know, you don't like the, the cliche saying, you know, role players and stuff like that, but, you know, Drell being scored, not by numbers, Galendo, not. Well, we I mean, it was, it was a collective. I got, listen, we, we really did everything, the guys in the game did everything they possibly could to, to tr give us a chance to win. Can you just talk about initially pulling Eric and, and what the reason you know, was? Well, we, we were down by a whole bunch and we subbed him and the guys who came in just gave great effort. I mean, you know, we had momentum and, you know, I, I would, in my mind, I just was extremely pleased with the guys that were in the game. And, you know, I, again, I want to keep my focus on the positivity of the, the tremendous effort that those kids put out there. And then once you got to halftime, and now you're leading to a new ball game, what did you say then in terms of capitalizing on the second half, not coming out flat like you did in the first half, and as well as Murray's situation? So two, two questions there. Uh, I, I, you got them blended together. Help me. <laughs> you separate them a little bit. Right, we'll start with, what did you say at halftime to assure that they didn't come out flat? Well, that is just, that's, there's nothing unusual about that. And we, we came out hard, but they made some good plays and, and uh, you know, got up 8 to 10 or so. Um, so there was nothing spectacular or good or bad in the locker room at halftime. So it's the second question. Did you, did you, were you intending on keeping Murray out of the game? Uh, I, no, I, I, was, I was intending to play the guys who were fighting the hardest, pure and simple. I mean, you know, and... And uh, then he has to go in at a certain point, and, uh, and I gave him that opportunity. And uh, they, they went up big on us, and, and I went back with that team that made the first run in the first half, and they made another run. So, you know, I gave him a chance in the first half, gave him a chance in the second half. Uh, but, uh, you know, certainly a coach wants to play the guys that, that uh, uh, are doing the best job. And, and just on this particular night, the, the, the guys I put out there were the guys that – made the runs for us. I played the guys that played their hearts out and, and gave us a chance. It's as simple as that. So would you clarify it as a physical or like a performance, how he played, or would you clarify it as an attitude effort thing? I would clarify it as we played guys who were playing great. <laughs> you could think and psychoanalyze whatever you want. I was a coach and I played the guys who were playing the best, and it's not deeper than that. So you'll see, first see a problem going. I played the guys who played the best. The numbers show it. The plus minus is the. It, it's up. If you don't see it, the person who doesn't see that I played guys who really played hard and gave the best effort, and that we made great runs with. Well, I believe anyone would see that. I think anyone who keeps pressing the question is looking for something strange. The obvious thing is we played guys who played their hearts out. What's more complicated than that? That's what we did. Well, I mean, they're, they're, the question is, he is one of the premier players in the league. You, in the both halves, after you took him out, you scored 68-39. Now, the, right. the question is, 68-39 without him, right? The question that's, is, why? That's all. I but just, without the best player I don't know. Okay. Hey, listen. <laughs> this is not an, uh, you know. You're, I'm. Brandon, um, you got the 60 to what was it, 39? 68, 39. 68, 39. <laughs> you know, and, you know. Last question. I mean, I, I'm shocked that I have to defend guys who outscored Dayton by 29 points. Uh, why you guys would make me do that, I have no idea. Are you? Thank you for that are you, objective information. <laughs> but... And I know this is hard because you're not watching the I'm not going to say anything other than I played the guys who, I'm not going to psychoanalyze my team. I'm not going to be critical of any kids. I, I, I'm, I'm going to 
to tell you what I did in the game. What I did in the game is I played the guys who outscored them 68 to 39. That's what I did. And, you know, and you guys know me. I, I like these kids, and, and I, I don't want, and, and I'm just going to emphasize the, as much good about them as I can because they're my kids. And, of course, tonight we had some guys not play well, and I'm going to emphasize the kids who, who played their hearts out. And, you know, why would I do anything else? With the, the end of the game, we got all the way back. You got, got the two and things like that. It, it was a repeat of, of Temple, and that was that. It was the one the key on the you know, don't let the home run pass yeah. come in because that was. We just game. lost the guy. Yeah, we just lost. Wasn't like pushing barefoot for Samaritan's feet. Say that again. What was it like coaching barefoot? I, I did it last year, and I'm very uncomfortable with it. I don't go barefoot at home. I don't even go barefoot at the beach unless I'm right at the sand, in the sand. But last year, I have a, a very close friend named Scott Maggie, who's the head coach at South Dakota State. He adopted, uh, he's adopted several kids, and one of them was from Haiti. And uh, he got on board with uh, Samaritan's feet. And... Uh, you know, I love Scott. Uh, we were in Illinois together. He was the grad assistant that followed me. I admire him. He, he's adopted a, a girl, a, a child from Russia and one from Haiti. And I thought when, when he decided to do it, it was the least I could do. Um, didn't know if I would do it again in the future, except for immediately after the game, I, I had a, a wonderful podiatrist pledge 100 shoes. So, I mean, I, I was just kind of blown away that that there's actually a hundred kids somewhere wearing shoes because of a basketball game and that people are so generous. The security guard today, when he saw me come out without shoes on, said, what's this all about? And he asked where he could send a donation. So, I mean, wow. I, mean, I just think that's, that's just awesome. I'm so happy to do it. It's so small. And because people are, are there's a lot of good people out there, all you have to do is is give them a chance to do good. I mean, I'll, I'll never forget, I was at Speedy Moore, when it was, it's, he, he may want to stay anonymous, but it's a physician who's a good friend of Speedy, and I was at a, a party with Speedy, at part of Speedy's uh, party after the game, and, and he stepped up, and uh, why wouldn't you want to, to do that again when you see how people respond? John, uh, Chris Wright, second half at 21 points, 21 of his 27, just, he really got it going with that. Yeah, yeah, he was great. He was absolutely great. Um, you know, I mean, he, he got shots out of the offense. He didn't force things. He was aggressive. He showed a high skill level making, you know, shots, going full speed, coming off cuts, stopping on the dime, and, and just knocking them down. That's, uh, you know, he, he, he was tremendous. And he's been tremendous throughout his whole career. But his, I was really impressed. Those, those shots he made, they, they were some open looks, but, but, but they were, Full speed, catch and shoot, stop on the dime, highly skilled plays that he made. Anything else? Uh, looking forward, your next two games are against teams that are one below, above you, one below you in the standings. Uh, what do you say to you guys about the way games? We, we, we never, we always say the same thing. We always, I mean, we always try to emphasize winning the next game and what the game plan is. There's, there's never any deviation from that. So, you know, we... We, we try to stay as focused as we possibly can on, on the task at hand. And, and certainly there's implications in the standings, we know that. Um, but you know, there's not going to be anything unusual in terms of what we emphasize and how badly we want to win. Thanks, John. Thanks, John.